Hello and welcome to the September Recruiting Insider webinar. Appreciate everybody that's here and I uh, see quite a few people that are uh, still in the process of of uh, signing in and give a real quick shout out to Ken Hammerschmidt. I see Ken's on here and Eric and, and Amanda, uh, Tom Fultz. Good to see you guys. Travis Rust, good to see you guys. Um, and I'm just grabbing a few names off the list as I glance over at people signing in. This is Kelly Anderson, and we have Matt Lee on the phone with us as well. And a uh, hey, couple of real quick uh, announcements. Um, I am in Nashville actually working. I'm about to be speaking at a conference uh, this afternoon. As soon as we conclude this, I'll make my way over to the uh, Higher Right User Conference here in Nashville today. And uh, they had to keep their uh, their audience. It's a little bit small, um, probably down to about 300 or so, but <laughs> I don't think it was that big But they, because of the facility they had. And so um, the standby for news, I hope I'm not speaking out of, out of turn here, but I think uh, this is something you're going to see High Right doing more of. And um, so we're really glad to be a part of this today. Uh, also, next week, it's not too late to register if you're interested. Um, we're, Matt and I are doing the Master Recruiting Conference at the American Trucking Association Safety Management Council. Um, it's being hosted by the Safety Management Council. We're gonna be at the ATA headquarters there in Arlington, uh, Virginia. Uh, we've got a good group uh, there for that conference. It starts on Tuesday morning, ends uh, at, at noon on Thursday. For those that can't be gone the entire time, you could come to the conversational recruiting techniques portion of that conference, which starts Wednesday morning and ends Thursday at noon. Uh, for more info, uh, shoot me an email uh, or uh, go to masterrecruitingtechniques.com. Um, is that right, Matt? Masterrecruitingtechniques.com? I always hit the link. <laughs> so that is you're correct. probably panicking. And look, the, all right, thank you. I'm about to say you're probably plugging it in yourself now. But uh, we do have some, some room uh, left in that conference uh, for next week, but almost, um, almost filled to capacity. So there's that as well. Um, with that being said, let's. Um, uh, I will say also next month's recruiting insider may get pushed by an hour. I'm doing a keynote that morning uh, on that Wednesday morning uh, in Pennsylvania, in P at Pittsburgh, and so I may need to push this for an hour. And so we may start at 11 a.m. Central um, next uh, next month. But with that being said, let's kind of get into this, and we're going to talk about key performance indicators. Because, uh, folks, if we can't measure it, we can't manage it. And um, so, so let me go ahead and start roll through some slides here. I want to thank um, HireRight for their support and also Ramsey Media Works for their support uh, of the Recruiting Insider. Folks, we have 964 registrants for, the, um, for this webinar every month now. So, um, man, I do not take that lightly. So thank you very much for that. And we typically... I uh, have a couple, two to 3,000 people that are on here when we get our surveys back and people saying how many attendees. Uh, so this has really become quite a um, quite an audience. And we, Matt and I do not take that lightly. I don't take lightly the investment in time, Matt, that you give every month um, to, you know, in support of the, the webinar and, and the great information that you bring. I will tell you, folks, if you haven't heard me say it before, recruitingsessions.com, they, uh, it's, Absolutely educational. They call it edutain uh, because Matt, you just wonder what's he going to do next. Uh, so they've got some really good uh, snippets in there of, uh, about advertising education, but also some some comic relief as well. And talking about comic relief, Matt, I think you're um, you're, you're kind of pulling my leg a little bit today. What's going on with this uh, KPI thing? Well, I appreciate that, Kelly. Um, you know, we always like to have a little bit of fun. We like to uh, educate and entertain at the same time. And, and of course, we coined that phrase, edutain, like, like Kelly said. And, and uh, we're all about uh, getting it done, but, but having a good time while we're doing it. And so, you know, Kelly's going to talk about uh, KPIs today. I figured we'd just kind of split that up a little bit, talk about KP, PI, and KIs. Um, so you're probably wondering what in the world is he talking about? So let's just jump into this. Um, first of all, KP and, and what that stands for is kitchen patrol or, or mess duty. And so, 
um, you know, what we have to do is we've got to, uh, first of all, the kitchen patrol uh, is kind of that job that nobody really wants to do. It's peeling potatoes or shucking corn or or whatever. You just gonna kind of get messy, and and there's there's just not you don't get a whole lot of uh, pats on the back for that, uh, you know, from the uh, from the kitchen. So um, what does that have to do with with drivers? Well, unfortunately, we all have uh, positions out there, um, and we all have lanes uh that that really cause us issues and and are messy for us um and that really nobody wants to do and so what what i always recommend is that you look at those uh areas uh within your particular company everybody has them um it's just we have to figure out which ones they are and what adjustments that we might be able to make uh to those areas whether it be you know, maybe getting them home, you know, just a little more frequent, uh, maybe figuring out a program where you can uh, get them home through the house or or some way that you just make it just a little unmessy uh, for that driver. You know, we all have those, like I said, positions um, that, you know, we have a hard time filling or we have a hard time retaining. And so um, that's what I would recommend on the KPs is trying to to look at your overall picture and try to figure out where you can make those adjustments uh, in some of those problem areas. So the second part of what I want to talk about today is the PI. And unfortunately, uh, old Magnum here, there's probably some folks on the call that, that don't even know who this man is, uh, which is really sad to me because uh, he was such a uh, iconic figure for a long, long time, Magnum PI. So I wanted to, to, of course, put him in here because we're talking about doing some private investigation. So my recommendation to companies always is to go out there and look what your competitors are doing and, and how you stack up. Uh, we do that uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, for, for our folks that we work with where we'll go out and we'll try to figure out, hey, what are some of the key competitors that, that, that you have? What are they doing? What are they offering? Um, and so we're able to provide that um, kind of that that private investigation part of it back to uh, folks. But obviously, you can do that on your own. I would suggest going out there and and defining what your competitors are and just taking kind of a a deep dive into what they're doing and and trying to figure out how uh, how you stack up and how uh, how you're able to uh, compete. You know, uh, on that level. Uh, and, and it is great homework, and I would suggest doing that at least annually, if if not uh, more frequent. And so let's get to the KI, and that's actually we're going to talk about chi, um, and uh, it basically means life force. And so um, what's the force behind your job? So that going back to that KP and trying to figure out what that um, what that problem area is for you figuring out how to make that change, figuring out how to say, okay, you know what, on all of our exit interviews, we're getting this particular response from this area. So can we make that change? Is it feasible and still be profitable? Um, so being able to do that with the, with the KPs and then doing the PI and actually doing that investigative work, seeing how we compete. And then so making sure that you actually are, are able to tell your story in a better light so that you are a step ahead of your competitor uh, and making sure that, uh, you know, whatever they're saying, you're saying it just a, just a little bit better. And so that's what this KI part of it is. And I know that it was having fun with Kelly uh, based on his KPIs, but really what we're talking about here is SWOT analysis. And so we need to define what our strengths are what our weaknesses are, what our opportunities are, and what our threats are. That's the only way that we're going to be able to, to win at this game. Um, you know, the driver shortage continues to just get, just get larger and larger by, by the day. Um, and so we've got to continue to go out there, do that analysis, do the reporting, um, figure out what our competitors are doing so that we can, we can have that competitive advantage and always stay one foot ahead of our uh, competition out there. And it's 
You know, it comes down to one simple thing. The, the, the folks that can find the drivers are going to win, and the ones that can't won't. And so uh, with that, uh, I want to turn it over uh, to Kelly. And again, thank you so much for this opportunity uh, to be part of this call. You bet, Matt. I appreciate it. And, and um, man, the truth is we could do an entire call just on the, on the advertising tracking portion of this. I know that's one of the things that uh, that you live and breathe and, and die on. Is and I mean, if, if we if we can't measure it, we can't manage it. And just looking at every single uh, piece of advertising, what type of response are we getting? You know, what message is is working? tweaking the message. It's amazing how the little tweaks um, that I've seen you make make a huge difference on the response rate. But uh, I know you guys are just, you have got phenomenal reporting that you provide. And um, that's part of what I know you share on your, uh, when you do presentations for folks and show them examples of the reports, um, which really break it down. And more, more than that, uh, not just throwing data at a, at a fleet, but then breaking it down and saying, hey, this is what we see in this, and this is what we do as a result of it. So I always appreciate that, Matt. And um, then let's just let's kind of keep going into this. So KPIs is key performance indicators. And, folks, if, if we, you know, a few months ago I did a webinar called uh, Purposely Planning for Intentional Success. And on that webinar I said, you know, the question is how do you define and success and when you ask most people that question they can't answer it and as a matter of fact it's the number one reason that fortune 50 companies in America fail is executive the executive vice presidents don't understand how their department contributes to the success of the company so one thing that we come out of here is once we understand how our company defines success secondly secondly uh, how our department contributes to that success. Now we can start sharing to with our employees how they help to contribute to that success, and then we can put specific measurements in place that help us to achieve that success and know that we're going there. Um, and so, for, for instance, your KPIs they need to uh, re uh, reflect your department goals. You know, if our goal is to keep our trucks full, reduce our turnover rate, reduce our onboarding cost, then our, our key performance indicators will measure the empty truck count, the turnover rate, and items related to your cost per hire. It's got to be quantifiable. Because, you know what, if we can't measure it, I said it a minute ago, if we can't measure it, we can't ma uh, manage it. And they've got to be key to departmental success. There are a lot of things that are measurable. And I see some folks that get totally wrapped up and they say, and, and some of you have bosses possibly, and, and I hope you're not a boss on the phone here. That, and if you are, then, then let's, let's stop it. Some, I've, I've seen some recruiting directors that get absolutely buried by somebody above them that is continually wanting this report and that report and the next report. And, you know, what are we doing with those numbers? And truly, what are those numbers really telling you? Are they really helping you achieve the success that you're looking for? There's a lot of things that are measurable, but not all of them are going, uh, are KPIs. And, you know, I, I say to people, whether it's in, in every aspect of our life, in every aspect of, of our department, in every aspect of doing our job, we've got to be careful that we don't get so busy doing the stuff that doesn't matter that we don't have the time to do the stuff that does matter. So make sure you got the right measurements in place. Make sure that, you know, as you look at your to-do list today and things that are being thrown at you today, that all of those things that you're working on are in perfect alignment with helping you to accomplish the goal that you need to accomplish on a daily basis. So second, the KPI should have a title. You know, so let's say it's, it's the turnover rate or it's the empty truck count. You should have a definition. You know, on turnover, it's the total number of employees who resign or, or were released. Measurement on a weekly basis. And guys, I have all sorts of different ways I measure this. I, I wanted something easy here on the webinar to say, um, you know, every week we look. We, we're, this is an annualized turnover, so every week we're just um, taking how many drivers we've lost in the last 12 months and dividing it by the um, 
our average driver count in the last 12 months, and there's our turnover rate. Truth is, you know, if I'm going to measure it for 2017, I'll, I'll look at how many drivers I've lost so far this year, um, divide that by the number of weeks that we've burned in the year, um, multiply that by the total number of weeks in the year, and then uh, divide that by the average number of drivers that we have on our fleet, and there's my uh, turnover rate for this year. Um, I will send, as part of the follow-up to this webinar, you'll get a document that shows several ways to figure turnover rate, and we'll um, also um, give you some of the calculators of other measurables within recruiting, um, and so those calculators will be there as well. So and then you gotta have a target. You know, where do we want our, our um, turnover rate to be? And, you know, last month we had Amanda on the phone, and, and Amanda at Stewart Transport did a phenomenal job. Everybody really, um, really appreciated that presentation. And one thing that she's done, done she has, is turnover. She got the definition, she got the measurement, she's got the target, and she's also communicating it. You know, by this date, we want to be at this level. And to, to get there, we can't lose more than this many drivers per week. And that really helps it to be a real number that people can get their mind wrapped around. Um, you know, maybe 35% seems whatever, you know, that's ambiguous to me. But when you say it's three drivers a week, okay, I, I can understand that. So break it down to a number that everybody in the company can get their mind wrapped around. KPI should be, con be communicated. And some of these need to be communicated within your department and others ought to be communicated throughout the entire company. Now, I made the, I actually coined this phrase. I was doing a management coaching session last week with, with one of the managers in my program, and, and this just came out. <laughs> so this is a brand new, hot off the press, Kellyism, and it's called, without goals, you have no direction. You'll have no direction. Without direction, you'll be driven by circumstances. When you're driven by circumstances, you will be crazy busy, but you lack any real accomplishment. You know, when you look at the look at the days when, when you when you really don't have a real purposeful direction, and I mean, you're just pulled every every which way, just reacting to things that are coming at you. And at the end of the day, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, man, alive! I didn't get anything done today, but your hair was on fire. <laughs> so. You know, so, and I'll tell you this, as I go around the country and I work with companies that have, uh, you know, people are calling me and I'm getting a lot of these calls. Guys, I've been traveling just nonstop helping folks. You know, man, our turnover rates through the roof are, we got empty trucks stacked against the fence. Here's one of the common denominators I find at er most every one of those fleets. Nobody outside of my point of contact knows that number. I'll ask people, hey, so how many tr empty trucks do you have? They have no clue. What's your turnover rate? I don't know. Ask fleet managers, how many, how many, you know, I've got some fleets that the fleet managers, um, the, you know, trucks, that they're, they're in charge of a division, and so they have certain trucks that are assigned to them. How many empty trucks do you guys have? I don't know. How many current trucks do you have? Well, I think it's, folks, if we don't know those numbers, what are we managing? It's amazing. Once you create that awareness um, to, to the number, people can, will get excited about it, and people start getting engaged in it, and people will start changing the outcome. Now, when I was over-recruiting, and I've done this you know, with, with fleets ever since, so this is, man, we've been doing this for the last 25, 30 years, and you know, every, every morning, I had a five-minute stand-up morning meeting. And my, me and my recruiters would stand around the boardroom, and the recruiters say, I, ha I have this many set up for next week in orientation. I got this many more possible, all the way around the room. And then I'd say, okay, so this week we have this many drivers in orientation. We're going to fill this many trucks, which will net us this many trucks at the end of the week. And for next week, then, we've got this many set up and this many more possible. Uh, so, you know, that's where we're going to end up at. So every day, we, everybody in my department knew the empty truck count, and they also knew you know, what we had for working for orientation. 
I want to say be careful with with what you define as okay. It was amazing. I I, I communicated that two and a half percent empty was okay. But what was amazing, when we'd go into a growth growth phase, we'd still keep the fleet at two and a half percent empty. When we'd get out of it out of a growth phase, we'd keep the fleet at two and a half percent empty. We never got to zero. Now I realize, and you, we all realize, you're not going to get totally to zero depending on how you count your empty trucks. We counted our empty trucks. I mean, if it was sitting there as a piece of scrap iron, if we still owned a, a title on it, it was on my it was on my empty truck report. So I was really glad to see those come off um, come off the deal. Trades, you know, in trade cycle, they'd be sitting there. Once we got rid of the title, then it came off my truck report. So you're not going to maybe get to totally to zero, but I tell you what, I could have got it below two and a half. Here's the Paul Harvey. I was gone, and six months later, I called into my recruiting department, and Jerry got on the phone and said, hey, you know, hey, how are you doing? That? Hey, I went and got the numbers. We have, and he said how many empty trucks they had and what the turnover rate was. And I said, Jerry, I got two problems with that number. I said, number one is the fact that you said you had to go get the number. You didn't know that number? And number two, what the number is for crying out loud. And he said, Kelly, the day that you, that you quit, the new director stopped the five-minute stand-up morning meeting. And I'll just put it on record now. I did not support that person as director. And other people trained and ready for that position. And, um, and they decided to go a different direction, which in the end was a mistake. He stopped that meeting. And they said, you know, Kelly, we don't know what the empty truck count is. We don't know what the turnover rate is. And it doesn't seem like anybody cares. Folks, when your staff don't think that you care anymore, when they don't know, when they, when they don't know the number, they can't help you with it. And when they don't think that you care anymore, you're in a real dangerous place. So I, it was a five-minute stand-up meeting. It was not, in, not dis, um, discussional. It was informational only. And frankly... We had it at 10 minutes till late. It was it was voluntary, and we were it, we were at our desk at 8 a.m. ready to work. Because at 8 a.m. you ought not be getting there to get ready to go to work. You ought to be going to work. So it was a great way to show up on time anyway. So, frankly, in some of these numbers, like I say, should be um, communicated throughout the entire um, company. And I, you know, it's amazing when I do retention seminars. And we say, you know, how many empty trucks have you had? And we, we share that number, and people are like, wow. And then I say, yeah, and so what's your, your, your hopeful, you know, what's your target revenue per day on a piece of equipment? Oh, it's $650. Okay, so let's times that by the 10 trucks you had empty or the 30 trucks you've had empty or the 50 or the 100. So you're losing this much per day, but you've had it for a year. So multiply that by the, the, the revenue days per year that you use. And that number gets in the millions really, really fast. That's we already had the assets, we just didn't utilize them. You know that gets makes it get pretty real pretty quick uh, to folks. So you know, I, you know, as I as I sat here and I thought about creating this this webinar, I was ready to put all sorts of th things into the recruiting KPIs that are, are shared on a daily basis. And I reflected on on my own department. I we correct. I reflected on my own team at Impact. And I reflected on the teams that I've helped around the country. And the number one thing that we talk about every single day is orientation and empty trucks. I mean, otherwise, people are just, just going, they're just working. Because, folks, in recruiting, the problem that we have is in recruiting, it is the fire that never goes out. It's the project that you never get the feeling of, of fruition on. So if we don't, if we don't as recruiting directors and, and leaders, if we don't share this number and kind of, hey, this is where we're at, and this is where we're going to be at the end of the week, to help our folks see a light at the end of the tunnel, to see the product of their work, then pretty soon it's going to get very mundane, and they're just going to start going through the motions. And they will be busy, but they will not be productive, as productive as they could be. So you know, that's why I think having that conversation every day is very important. Here's some other additional measurements. You know, so of course the driver turnover uh, and communicate as I mentioned earlier. 
in a number everybody can get their their um, their, their mind wrapped around and show the cost of turnover. You know, when you figure it off of $3,500, which is a low number of cost of turnover, and or, um, and frankly, as well, here's what's crazy. Every driver we save, we get to keep the whole dollar. Whereas every dollar we make, we get to keep about five cents of it or less, depending on what your operating ratio is. So when we're losing a driver, we're throwing $5,000 that was already in our, in our checking account out the window. So show the costs, and, and that'll start making it seem a little more important for folks. But your advertising cost per hire. Uh, and, you know, I had a message this morning uh, from a um, recruiting director saying, hey, you know, ours is $641. How do we, how do we, how do we measure up? Folks, my answer to him was he is about a third to a half of what I normally hear from recruiting directors today. And by the way, he's about 20% of what I hear from some others. Uh, so, you know, many companies are right at, right around the thousand dollar mark on the advertising cost per hire. Um, you know, that's the thing when I talk about Matt and his measurements, how he works so hard to what is working, what's getting us the leads that we need. And I'm not talking about generic leads. I'm talking about direct inquiries right to your recruiting department. Um, you know, so, and frankly, measuring them all, but that's what he's about is direct inquiries. And then of those, what are we, you know, which ones are we transferring uh, into, um, into hires? So uh, total cost per hire. The hires per source, which I was just talking about, hires per recruiter, turnover rate per recruiter, and application flow. And by the way, turnover rate per recruiter, most companies stop um, measuring that against recruiters after 90 days. But I can also tell you, uh, you know, I work with companies on strategic touch points. Amanda talked about that last month. Uh, if you can't get the rest of your company involved in that, then get your recruiters involved in it. Have your recruiters contact their drivers, first off, in orientation. Meet them. You know, the, they, they came to work for your company uh, as a result of trusting that recruiter. We ought to show the respect to them and appreciation to them. And by the way, it's a good way to get, build a relationship so we can get referrals uh, by meeting them in orientation. Second, calling them 30, 60, and 90 days later. And how are you doing? It's a chance for us to test our message. It's a chance for us to identify drivers that are thinking about quitting before it gets to that point and to address it, and you will lower your turnover rate. Um, so, you know, by the way, I was, I was doing a management coaching session with a fleet manager last week, and he's one of those guys got an attitude, just straight up. I'm not going to say his name, of course. Um, he had an attitude, and oh, I mean, these drivers this way, those drivers that way. And I'm like, well, have you had, did you call them the Thursday before orientation? I mean, the, the fleet managers on your company that are doing that uh, say the guys are shocked when they call, and they're excited and come looking for them when they're there in orientation. The relationship has already started before they even show up. Ah, I didn't have time to do any of that stuff. You know, these guys, rah, 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 and kept going. I finally said to him, sir, you need to understand something. <laughs> you have fewer drivers than any other fleet manager on your company have lower productivity than the other fleet manager on your company and a higher turnover rate. So if you're, you know, and your president and your director of operations knows this now. And so if they recruit a driver and put it on your fleet, that driver is more likely to make less money for the company and to leave the company. Do you think you and I can talk about how to improve that? <laughs> he said, well, I guess maybe I should. <laughs> Listen, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm working hard to to, to influence him. Uh, he, he's enough, age doesn't have necessarily anything to do with it because you can have young folks that have a bad attitude as well. But I'm um, hoping to 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 influence him to to try a new road uh, because the road he's on is not getting him where he wants to go. And frankly, uh, the road he's on is going to take him to unemployment in in short order <laughs> if he doesn't get changed. Folks, that's what happens when we start measuring it. When we start measuring and we start managing it, and hey, when we're measuring it, you know, I, frankly, as an employee, I don't want to be managed by your gut. I want to be managed and held accountable by real, quantifiable numbers. 
because we can manage that. So, anyways, so there, you know, here's some additional measurements that are um, that recruiting departments can do. I will be sending out a spreadsheet uh, with several uh, calculators and things on it. You know, lots of folks are on 10th Street. 10th Street's got a lot of reporting functions within it as well. So, um, you know, hopefully my documents just give you some ideas. If you're not already tracking in those ways, uh, your many of these types of, of tracking, uh, frankly, uh, Matt just does for his clients. Uh, many of our, his clients give him access to the uh, hires by source part of, of 10th Street, and um, and they just go in and grab the number and build the reports out of it. Um, so, just folks, we've got to measure it. So, with that being said, we have run out of our time. I hope that you have found this. Um, very useful and uh, look look please can uh, take time I don't see any questions listed please take time uh, to answer the survey at the end of the um, of the the webinar and let, you know give me feedback on things that you want to hear about because those are the things that drive these topics and if you have any questions you know some of you have requested information on services that I provide um, and I'm if you if you don't feel like you're getting the answers you need, you got my email right there. Uh, please reach out to me and and uh, we'll we'll go from there. But um, look forward to to working with you guys and, and helping you all reach the goals that you have. And with that, we'll end this webinar. Thank you very much.